magnify the Lord. Say magnify Jesus, magnify Jesus, magnify the Lord. Oh, magnify Jesus, magnify Jesus, magnify Jesus, magnify the Lord. Magnify Jesus, magnify Jesus, magnify the Lord. Amen. Give them a high five. Give them a fist bump, an elbow bump. Come on and tell them that it's good to see in the house of God today. Amen.
up a shout of praise if you know that our God is worthy to receive all the praise and all the glory today. Amen. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. And the scripture says, weeping may endure for the night, but joy comes in the morning. Amen. Can somebody shout joy? I can't hear you. Can somebody shout joy? Can somebody shout joy? Come on, lift up your voice and shout joy. Because there is joy in the house of the Lord today. Amen. Let's sing. We sing to the God who was. We sing to the God who was. We worship the God who is. We worship the God who evermore will be. Cause he opened the prison doors. He parted the raging sea. My God, he holds the victory. There's joy. Come on. There's joy in the house of the Lord. There's joy in the house of the Lord today. the God who saves. We worship the God who always makes a way. Cause he hung up on that cross. Then he rose up from that grave. My God still rolling stones away. Come on and shout it out. There's joy in the house of the Lord. There's joy in the house of the Lord today. And we won't be quiet. Well shout out. Shout out your praise. There's
Hallelujah, Jesus. What a privilege and an honor it is to be in the presence of the Lord. Because it is in his presence that you find peace. It is in his presence that you find comfort. It is in his presence that healing takes place. It is in his presence that breakthrough happens. Amen. So I don't know about many of you guys, but I don't know what you've been through this week, been through this month, been through this year. But God requires us to worship him. God requires us to lift up our hands and magnify him and thank him for everything that he has done. Amen. Because he is a good God. He is a good, good father. He is a good shepherd to all. Amen. And so we worship him from just the place of victory because we are overcomers. Amen. By the blood of Jesus Christ, we have been made whole, redeemed, and restored. Hallelujah, Jesus. As we continue to, in worship, I just want to remind you that the altar is available for you to come forward. Just to release anything that you may have. See, God wants you to release everything that has been stored up in you. Because he is doing a new birth. He is, a doing, he is doing a new birth in you. Amen. There is new to come. There is a newness that is coming. And God is just stirring something in your womb. And he is ready. He wants you to release. But in order to release and push that out, it's going to require the Holy Spirit that lives within you to push any residue, to push any pain, to push any hurts, to push any discouragement, any intimidation, any anxiety, to push it out in order for God to bring the newness in you. Amen. So I want you guys to just take this moment to just allow the Holy Spirit to minister to your hearts. And now allow the Holy Spirit to just stir up in something in you. Amen. Because God wants to do a new thing in you. He wants to do a new thing in you. Hallelujah, Jesus. We bless your name. Bless your name, Jesus. We honor you, Lord. He says to release, 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 release your pain, release your hurts, release your sorrows and your grief. And give it to him. He wants to meet you here today. He is here for you. Oh, Lord. And I just want to bless your name. The name that is above every name. And I just want to make you glad Jesus and I just want to move your heart God to give you all I am let's sing that again I just want to bless your name and I just want to bless your name I just want to make you glad I just want to make you laugh. I just want to move your heart. I just want to move your heart, God, to give you all, to give you all I am. For it's by His will, by
to sing. And I just want to bless your name. I just want to make you glad. I just want to make you glad. We just want to move your heart, oh God. And I just want to move your heart, God, to give you your testimony today. I just want to bless you, Lord. And I just want to bless your name. It's a beautiful name, a oh, wonderful. I just want to make you glad, Lord Jesus. And I just want to Yes, 
come on, lift it up again. To worship you, I live. To worship you, I live. He inhabits the praises. I live, I live to worship you. To worship you, I live. To worship you, I live. Yes, Lord. To worship you, I live. I live to worship you. I just want to bless your name. And I just want to bless your name. Come on, let's sing it out unto him. And I just want to make you glad, Jesus. I just want to move your heart, God, to give you all I am. Come on and sing it out. I just want to bless your name, Jesus. I just want to bless your name. Beautiful name, Lord. I just want to make you glad. Jesus, and I just want to move your heart now to give you all I am. Jesus. Let's continue in that atmosphere of, pray, of prayer and worship. We want to bless you this morning, my Lord. That is the purpose, to bring worship to you, God. You rejoice, Father, when your church worships you, God. Lord, today, Father, we want to ensure that all that I am worships you, God. That all that I am, Father God, brings you glory to you Lord Father God today Jeremiah reminded us Lord that he said bless is the man and the woman who trust in you God who their confidence is in you Lord for there should be like a tree planted by the waters Lord their roots Father will spread by the waters Lord and rivers and father God when the heat comes Lord they will fear no evil father God for their trust you Lord and father today we want to trust you God we want our lives father God to be hiding father under you my Lord father in the name of Jesus we love you we worship you we thank you Lord and Father, as a church, Lord, we pray, Father, for Ukraine, for Russia, God. We pray that their leaders, Father, their hearts will be moved toward you, God. You are a God that is omnipresent. Therefore, there's no distance, Father God. And we summon angels to this nation, God. We summon angels to protect, Father, those children, those women, Father God. Lord, in the name of Jesus, we pray for the missionaries. We pray for the pastors, Father God. In the name of Jesus, Father, as the church rise up, Father God, for the mission that you have given, Lord. Father, I pray that every heart, Father, every mind that is listening, Father God, will know, God, that with you we are more than conquerors, Lord. And Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you, Father, for our own Pastor Brian in Guatemala, for Pastor Martin in Guatemala, for Jeremy, Father God. Lord, in the name of Jesus, protect them, Lord. And we pray, Father, for those, Lord, who are feeling fear right now. Father, by the power of the Holy Spirit, Father God, Lord, you said that you give us the key of the kingdom, that whatever we bind on earth will be bound in heaven, God. We bind the spirit of fear, Father God, in the name of Jesus. And we release peace. We release joy. We release, Father God, a spirit of worship in every believer, Father God. Lord, in the name of Jesus, we thank you. To you be the glory, to you be the honor. In Jesus' name, the people of God says, Amen.
and amen. God bless you. You might take a seat at this time. We welcome you to Chapel of Change. Thank you for being here in the sanctuary. This is a spiritual discipline that will allow you to have joy and peace in the midst of crisis. Amen. And we welcome those online. Thank you for being with us. You know, when you are um, outside of the country, it's really nice when someone shouts out to you. Why don't we shout out to our Pastor Brian in Guatemala? Amen. And Pastor Martin and Jeremy, thank you for doing God's work all, all the way in Guatemala. Amen. So God bless you. We will continue to worship God with the word of God. In a few seconds, we're going to have our own Pastor Terry Beasley bringing the word of God. Amen. So get your books, get your Bibles, get your pencils, and write down because I believe God has a word for you. Then after that, uh, we will go ahead and give God what he already gave us. We will be uh, giving our offering our tights and so at this time enjoy this video welcome everyone to chapel of change i'm paola Larcon and i'm paloma Larcon and we serve the young adult and outreach ministry at the carson campus it's a joy to have you worship with us. If you're a first time guest, before you leave, make sure you get your gift at the Welcoming Center. We have a free CD of the testimony of Pastor Brian that will encourage your faith. Stay connected with Chapel of Change and Pastor Brian by texting your name to 562-393-7330. That's 562-393-7330. You'll receive a weekly update. You can also download our church's phone app from our website. The phone app is important because it has our latest teachings and messages. Don't forget we also have midweek worship and Bible study. Wednesday evenings at 7.15 at our Carson campus. And Thursday night at 7.15 at the Paramount campus. Kids, church, and teen groups are available then too. Get your Bible out and prepare to receive a word from God. See you! Good morning, good morning, family. How many glad to be here today? Do we serve a good God? Amen, amen, amen. I'm excited just to be able to stand before you this morning for the opportunity to be able to share with you how good God has been to me. So you that are online, that are looking today, that are watching, prepare your hearts to receive what God has for you. So the, our theme or the charge this year is all in. Amen? All in. So when you hear all in, what do you think? Everything. Somebody said everything, huh? When you hear all in, well, when I say all in, when Pastor Brian gave us the mandate all in, he didn't just mean for all of the workers to be all in, to come to church and support the church. But he meant that we as a body would love God with all of our heart and our souls and our mind. Amen. So this morning, I want to speak a word to you today that God has given me. And it's found in the book of Genesis, the Old Testament, chapters 22, verses 1 through 14. And if you have it, you can say, Amen. So two people have it so far, right? It's the first book in the Bible, in the Old Testament. Okay. Genesis, the second chapter. The 22nd chapter, verses 1 through 14. If you have it, say amen. So for a thought or a title... This morning, I already gave us the charge all in, but just for a title this morning, let's use the ultimate test. The ultimate test. So it reads in Genesis, sometime later, God tested Abraham. He said to him, Abraham, here I am, he replied. Then God said, 
take your son, your only son, whom you love, Isaac, and go to the region of Moriah. Sacrifice him there as a burnt offering on a mountain I will show you. Ooh, did you hear that? Sacrifice. Early the next morning, Abraham got up and he loaded his donkey. He took with him two of his servants and his son Isaac. When he had cut enough wood for the burnt offering, he set out for the place God had told him about. Verse 4, on the third day, Abraham, he looked up and he saw the place in a distance. He said to his servants, stay here with the donkey while I and the boy go over there. We will worship and then we will come back to you. Now, Abraham, the father of faith, did you hear what he just said? He said, we will worship then we will come back to you. Now, remember, God had just told him to, he's going to sacrifice his son. So Abraham was believing, trusting God that somehow that God was going to raise his son back up. That's a little side note for you. Verse 6, so Abraham, he took the wood for the burnt offering and he placed it on Isaac. And he himself carried the fire and the knife. And as the two of them went together, Isaac spoke and said to his father, Abraham, Father, yes, my son, Abraham replied. The fire and the wood are here, Isaac said. But where is the lamb for the burnt offering? Abraham answered, God himself will provide the lamb for the burnt offering, my son. And the two of them went on together. Man, what a test. When they reached the place God told him about, Abraham built an altar there, and he arranged the wood, and he tied his son Isaac and laid him on the altar. Now, you see there wasn't a fight there, but the Bible said he tied his son. Now, in my study, I found that Isaac, he just wasn't a little bitty boy, but Isaac was a young man in his 20s. And so the, he would let us know that his son, he went willingly. Now, who does that remind us of today? Huh? Who's that reminder of our Lord and Savior? He went willing to the cross. So he tied him. He tied him. And he laid him on the altar on top of the wood. Stay with me, family. Then he reached out his hand and he took the knife to slay his son. But the angel of the Lord called out to him from heaven, Abraham, Abraham, here I am, he replied. Do not lay a hand on that boy, he said. Do not do anything to him. For now I know that you fear God, because you have not withheld from me your son, your only son. And Abraham looked up, and there in the thicket he saw a ram caught by his horns, he went over there and he took the ram and he sacrificed it as a burnt offering instead of his son. Verse 14, so Abraham called that place Jehovah Jireh, the Lord will provide. And to this day it is said on the mountain of the Lord, it will be provided. How many know that we serve a God that will provide? For Jehovah Jireh is still in the house today. Don't you know in the midst of our testament we go through that Jehovah Jireh is here, that God, he will provide. So you see, in the book of Genesis, Abraham, the father of faith, he had been through so many tests, test after test after test. Do that sound like some of you today? You've been experiencing test after test after test? Huh? But Abraham, the father of faith, he had already had many tests already. The first test he had to experience, he had to experience, he had to leave his relatives. God told him to leave his family. Now that was a test right there. But Abraham, he was obedient to God. Now can you just imagine God speaking to you, telling you to leave your family? Telling you to separate, telling you to give up from all of them to, to be separated and to come out to, and go to a strange place where you've never been before? 
maybe Guatemala, huh? El Salvador. But he was obedient. That was one test. And then there was another test that he had to endure. When God told him he had to leave or separate from his nephew, Lot. Now, Abraham, he loved Lot. Lot was dear to him. That was, his, that was his road dog. You know, have you ever had a road dog, somebody that was just close to you, maybe a cousin or a best friend? But it came a time where you had to separate yourself? Huh? So that's two tests right there that he had experienced. And then his third test, he had to leave his son, Ishmael. That's right, he had another son. He had another son called Ishmael. That son was the daughter of Hagar, the Egyptian slave. But see, God had told Abraham, he said, Abraham, I'm going to bless your seed. Even though you have age, I'm, I'm going to bless you. You're going to be able to have a kid. But Abraham and Sarah, they couldn't wait. So Abraham went on ahead and he, he got busy with the Egyptian slave and they had a baby called Ishmael. <coughs> that ain't no COVID, but my little throat gets a little itchy every now and then. So don't start running, take it off, okay? You on live stream, y'all y'all okay. You guys okay. But anyway, <laughs> let me. But anyway, Hagar. Hagar, she was laughing and she was clowning Ishmael. And when Sarah saw that, she told Abraham, they got to go. They have to leave. And that hurt Abraham because he didn't want to let his son go. He didn't want to push them out there. But how many know you got to listen to your wife? Sometime. If you're married, <laughs> listen to your wife sometime, okay? Listen to the wife sometime. Because somebody said a, a, a happy wife is a what? A happy life, amen. <laughs> Come on, somebody, okay. Well, let me say something else right quick. Since we're on that wife thing there, that God has given us a helpmate. The Bible says that he that finds a wife finds a, a good thing. And he receives favor from God. So you that have wives, you have a good thing. God's favor is with you. Amen? Okay, let me go back to my, my message here. Okay. You're doing good, T. Time-wise, I'm talking about. I'm not bragging myself about my time-wise. I just want to stay within my time frame that we have here. Amen? So you see Abraham, he had that. It was three tests right there that he had, right? And now... He gets ready to face the most challenging test he was about to experience. God was telling him to sacrifice his son, the one that meant so much to him, the one that was so dear to him. But for God to be able to speak to Abraham like that, in my study, I found out that, this, that God that they were talking about here in the Hebrew, it meant Elohim. Elohim, the almighty God, the, the omnipotent God, the supreme God, the, the, the personal God, the one that spent time with Abraham, the one that was able to walk with Abraham, the one that was able to talk with Abraham, the one that knew Abraham. They had a relationship. So God had a relationship with, with Abraham. So when God told Abraham to sacrifice your only son, Abraham had to know the voice of God. So when you're going through a test, family, when you're going through a test, you better know the voice of God. We better know the voice of God. When you get ready to face a test like this, you better know is God speaking to you. When God is telling you to do something like this, you better know that you know that God is speaking to you. Not what Pastor Terry is saying. Not what Pastor Brown, but what, 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 what God is saying to you. And Abraham knew because he had a relationship with him. We're talking about being tested and a difficult test, the ultimate test. The Bible says in John, the 10th chapter, in the 27th, he says, For my sheep know my voice, and I know them, and they will follow me. My sheep, my sheep, my sheep, my people, my people, they know my voice. Abraham knew his voice. 
That's why he was able to do and was able to endure the test that God was calling him to do. And so you today that are facing a test today, this test is not your normal test, but this is a test. You say that we all in, right? But there was something that we're still holding on to. You know, pastor, he just been preached. He just preached a message about the rich young ruler. This man had everything going on, right? But he was still lacking something. It was one thing he was still lacking. And y'all remember if I preached about two months ago, I spoke on lay aside every weight and sin. God speaking to his family. There's something that we, God wants to get a hold to in our life. He wants us to see. So my sheep know my voice. They know me. The Bible says in Romans, the 10th chapter, in the 17th verse, it says, so faith comes from hearing and hearing through the word of God. Huh? So in order to know God's word, to know his voice, you got to be able to get into your word, huh? You got to be able to get into your word, read his word, read his word, and then what it does, it, in, it increases your faith. Huh? It increases your faith, then you can be able to hear God more clearly. Huh? So Abraham, he had faith, right? He's the, the Bible says he's the, he's the father of faith, right? So when God was able to speak to him, he knew it was God, and so you at the same time. Come on now, because when them, when them trials, are, when you in them trials, you need some word that's going to keep you, Amen. When you're in them devastating trials, when them trials have, that, that have that just knocked the wind out of you, you're going to need some word, right? Huh? You're going to need some word, right? You're going to need to know that I'm more than a conqueror in Christ Jesus, right? You're going to need to know that no weapon formed against me, what? Shall prosper, right? You're going to need that word, family. So the ultimate test. So in, a, in order to be all in and to be tested like that, you better know God. But let me just, just for a side note, just for a quick second. Not every crisis or problem in life is a test from God. Ooh. Let me say it again. Not every crisis or problem that we face is not a test from God. For we often bring problems on ourselves because of our disobedience because of the mistakes that we've made. And then the first thing we want to say is that God is testing me. No, you bought that on yourself. Just for example. Now, I know I was supposed to put gas in my car. My car was on empty. I know that. I know I put gas in my car. But I'm going to try to drive and drive all around the blocks and stuff, and all around the city and stuff, right? And I run out of gas. And I'm going to say, God, no, God ain't testing me. That's my own foolishness. I should put some gas in my car, right? We want to say God is testing us because we save and we sanctify. You know, yeah, I'm going through. I'm being tested right now. My lights have been turned off. I don't have no electricity in my house. But if you would have paid your bill... If you would have paid, you knew that bill was due. But you decided to go out and buy some clothes. Huh? But now you want to go to the, you want to go to the office down there and speak in tongues to get, to get your lights turned back on. It's too late for all that. But you want to say, oh, but God, he's testing me. No, that's on your own foolishness. Huh? So we need to know the difference between our mistakes, the stuff that we bought on ourselves, and when God himself is really testing us like the way he did Abraham. Can I get a witness? For the Bible says in James, the first chapter, 13 and 14, when we're tempted, no one should say, God is tempting or God is testing me. For God cannot be tempted by evil, nor does he tempt anyone. 
But each person is tempted when they are dragged away by their own evil desires. That's the word right there. That's what the Bible says right there. So we got to stop blaming God and take it for ourselves, what we did ourselves. Amen? So let me go to my first point. God is testing you. God is testing you. Think for a moment about your life right now, where you are right now. You're going through some things right now. I mean, kind of laid it out already about some things we bring on ourselves, but today I want to let you know that what you're going through today, you that have been faithful to God, you that know God's voice, you that have been faithful to God, that God is testing you, that God is testing you. The Bible says in Jeremiah, the 20th chapter and the 12th verse, yet, O Lord of hosts, you who test the righteous. Psalms 11 and 5 says, the Lord tests the righteous and the wicked and the ones who love violence his soul hates. For you see, we will be tested. I know that's not a shouting message, but it's a truthful message. You that are listening today, you will be tested. If Father Abraham was tested, John the Baptist was tested. Remember when he was put into prison? He began, he began to question, is he the one or should we look for another? Peter was tested. Remember when, he, remember when, when Christ was crucified? He ran and he hid and he denied Christ three times. The prophet Elijah was tested. Remember when Jezebel threatened him, he ran for his life? We will be tested. Mary and Martha were tested. Remember when their brother Lazarus died? Huh? If these heroes of faith were tested, what make you think you're going to be exempt from being tested? Huh? There's a reason that we're going through this testing and this trying times. First of all, you made a commitment. You say, I'm all in. Huh. I love you, Lord, with all my heart, with all my soul, with all my mind. You all in, right? So the testing time is here. So why did God test Abraham? And so why does he test me and you today? God, Elohim, the great God, the supreme one, the one that he knows all things. Don't you know God? He already knew Abraham's heart. He already knows my heart. He already knows your heart. But God wanted Abraham to know what was in his own heart. Mm. Just maybe God wants you to know what's in your heart. Where do you really stand? Where do I really stand if I'm really all in? Huh? Just maybe because the great God, the one that knows all things, he already knew all of this. So how does God test us? First of all, he initiates the test because he told Abraham what to do. He asked Abraham to sacrifice that which was so special to him, his son. And then sometime God, he tested us through allowing crisis to arise in our life through natural circumstances through human events that God will sometime test you and I well preacher what do you mean natural circumstances well just maybe you have a job and you've been faithful on your job and you are the bread provider for your home and just maybe that particular day you go into work and your job is laying off and they call you in and give you a layoff notice. You've been devastated because for so long you've been the breadwinner. And now you are being tested. These are natural events because companies do shut down, right? Or maybe you go into a separation or a divorce 
And that's very painful. That's a devastating time for some of us. But, you, but you're being faithful to God and you're being tested. Just maybe God is testing your patience. Just maybe God is testing your faith. Just maybe today you're finding out that God is testing your love. Just maybe God is testing your endurance. Maybe God is testing your humility. Mm. Just maybe <laughs> God is testing your sacrifice. But what about God just may be testing your obedience. Will you be obedient to him no matter what the cost? Huh? Just maybe. Think on that just for a moment. So to be all in takes me to my next point. We must purpose in our heart to trust God even when we don't understand. Mm. Can I say it again? We must purpose in our hearts to trust God even when you don't understand because you've been faithful to God. Abraham was faithful to God, right? You've been faithful to God. You've been coming to church. You've been paying your tithes. You've been going to Bible study. You've been faithful to God. But it comes a point in time when you experiencing some very tough trials and tests. And it comes to a point where you don't even understand why all this is happening to me. How can I go through all of this? But Abraham, he had to trust God even when he didn't understand. Because see, God told Abraham, he says, Abraham, I want you to sacrifice your son. Now, first of all, sacrificing his kid was totally was, was against what God was even believing. Because if you read in the uh, other chapter in Leviticus, God had told the people, the Canaanites, to stop all that human sacrificing. So God wasn't with human sacrificing. He wasn't with that. So Abraham, he was, he was confused. He was confused. He was like, wait, 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 wait a minute. God, you told me to sacrifice my son. And Abraham was still being obedient. He was taking, he was doing everything God told him to do. But he still had to trust God, even though he didn't understand. Maybe that's you today. Maybe you are facing some trials right now that are so hard right now that you don't understand why, why, why you have to go through all of this. Why is it so difficult for you? Why is my marriage like the way it is? God, I'm doing all I'm supposed to do. Lord, I'm reading my Bible. God, I'm praying to you, but God, why is it still, why I'm still having problems in my home, in my marriage, God? But God, why am I having problems with my children? Huh? I've been praying for my children, but why, why, why they won't get their lives right? They're still struggling with drugs and alcohol. I don't understand, God, but God, God I, I've been faithful to you, Lord. God, why did I get this layoff notice? God, I've been faithful to you. You told me to give. I keep giving to you. I keep giving to the church, God. But why? They gave me a layoff notice. But I yet got to trust you, God, no matter what, even though I don't understand. God told him to sacrifice his son. He didn't understand, but he had to be obedient. The Bible says, Proverbs, the third chapter, one of my favorite verses, the fifth and the sixth verse. It says to trust in the Lord with all of my heart. Lean not to my own understandings, but in all my ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct my paths. Family, that's the word to you today. Trust in the Lord with all of your heart. Lean not to your own understandings, but in all your ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct your paths. I know it's tough right now, but continue to trust in God. Continue to hold on to his unchanging hand. Thank you. 
1 Peter 4, 12 and 13 said, Beloved, think it not strange concerning the fiery trial, which is to try you as though some strange thing has happened to you. But rejoice in as much you are partakers of Christ's sufferings, that when his glory shall be real, you shall be glad also with exceeding joy. Beloved, think it not strange concerning the fiery trial. This is not a strange thing you're going through right now. God is with you. Elohim is with you today. He understands your pain, your battle, but he's with you today. Can I get a witness, somebody? Huh? Can I get a witness, somebody? The Bible says also in James, the first chapter, verses 1 and 3, count it all joy, my brothers and sisters, when you face trials of many kinds, because know this, that the testing of your faith produces perseverance. God will keep us today. Amen? Y'all remember, so, so, so family, during this testing time, we got to take the mentality of Job. Y'all remember Job, right? The one that had so much. He had a family, he had property, he had children, he had everything. And he lost it all. But he continued to trust God. Even his wife told him to, to, to curse God and die. But he continued to trust God. And he was giving back everything to him. Job said it like this. He says, though he slay me, yet will I trust him. Though he slay me, yet will I trust him. No matter what I'm going through right now, I'm going to trust God anyhow. Can I get a witness, someone? So take on that mindset. Though he slay me, I love it. Though he slay me. Yet will I trust him. And you know what? God ain't the one slaying you. But you, you know what? But I'm still going to trust him anyhow. Amen? Y'all ain't ready for this. For the Bible says this. For we walk by faith <laughs> and not by sight. We walk by faith <laughs> and not by sight. No matter what it looks like right now. I'm not looking at that. I'm going to continue to trust God no matter what. Because I'm a believer and I trust God. I don't care how bad it feels sometimes. For the believers walk by what? By faith. Even though it hurts, I'm going to continue to trust God. We walk by faith. And my last point is this, family. My last point is this. When you get those notes together, Brother T, amen, amen. My last point is, can I see my last point? No, okay, okay. Yeah, okay. My last point is this. The Lord sees your faith and rewards us in his time. God has seen your faith. God has seen your faith. God has seen your faith. And he will reward you in his time. His time. Now look at verse 14. It says, so Abraham called that place the Lord will provide. And to this day, it is said on the mountain of the Lord, it will be provided. Jehovah Jireh, God, he had provided. God had provided a lamb for Abraham. For you see, God always has a plan. So you know, as going back to the story of Abraham, right? When God told Abraham to sacrifice his son. Now, the Bible says that Abraham was climbing up the side of the mountain. And it took him three days to get there. But God always has a plan. When you're going through your test, God always has a plan. So as Abraham was climbing up on that side of the mountain, God had a ram climbing on the other side of the mountain. God had a lamb climbing up on the other side of the mountain. There's always a plan. God always has a plan when you're going through. So when it came to the point where Abraham got ready to slay his son, God was already in the mix. Because the Bible says he turned around, he looked, and there was a ram in the bush. There was a ram in the bush. God had provided. Jehovah Jireh, God will provide in the midst of your storm, in the midst of your test, that God, he will provide. In the midst of your layoff, God will provide. Jehovah Jireh will provide. In the midst of your marriage problem, God will provide. God will resurrect. 
in the midst of your children acting up, the Bible said, if you believe, I would save your whole household. Huh? But you got to keep the faith. You got to continue to trust God. So family, can I close with this here? The Bible says, it says, blessed is the one who perseveres under trials because having stood the test, that person will receive the crown of life and the Lord has promised to those who love him. As I get ready to take my seat, beloved, Galatians, the sixth chapter, and the ninth verse says this, let us not become weary in well-doing, for at the proper time you shall reap a harvest if you don't give up. Can I say it again? Family, chapel of change, you listen today. Let us not become weary in well-doing, for in due season we shall reap not just one blessing, but the Bible says a harvest, a harvest, a harvest, a harvest, if we faint not. So this test you're going through, don't you throw in no towel. Don't you throw in the towel right now because God is testing me and you. God, he's building us, he's shaping us, he's molding us. But there's some things that we have to let go. So he called Abraham. He said, Abraham, lay aside that which is so dear to you. And so I speak to you today. If you're all in for Jesus, today, are you willing to sacrifice your Isaac? Are you willing today, as the worship team come, or somebody come on the stage here and give me a little music here as we get ready to bring this to an end. Look at your neighbor and tell them God will provide. Don't panic. It's just a test. Say it again. Don't panic. I don't mean to make your situation light, but don't you panic. It's just a test. But Jehovah Jireh is here today. And he will provide. He'll provide healing. He'll provide deliverance. He'll provide peace. He'll provide restoration. He'll provide joy. Whatever you need, God has it today. Whatever you need in the midst of your test, God's able to restore so what is the most precious thing that you have in this world today and have you laid it down at the feet of Jesus if not what is delaying you and the last question I'll say again I said it before are we willing to lay down our Isaacs today. Let us pray. Let's... Father, we sit before you right now, Lord, in the name of Jesus. God, you know us. You know our hearts. God, you created us. But God, today, help us to release that that we've been holding on to that is being Stopping us, God, really from giving you our all and our all. God, help me today, Lord, to destroy or give you my Isaac. Help me, God, to make you first in my life, Lord. God, help me, Lord. Maybe you have been putting your children before God. Maybe you've been putting your spouse before God. Maybe you've been putting your job or your finances before God. But this morning, God is requiring that we give it to him. So God, I pray you would continue, God, to be with us this morning. God, touch our hearts, God. Help us, God, to give you our Isaacs today. And in Christ's name we pray. Everyone said, Amen and amen.
Let's thank God for some real talk this morning from the Word of God. Come on, you can do better than that. Come on. We need real talk. We need some real talk. Somebody say amen in the house of the Lord. We're now going to transition as we worship the Lord with our uh, tithes and offering. And I want to read uh, from 2 Corinthians chapter 9, uh, verse 6. 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 6, as we prepare to give in worship and our tithes and offering. It says, uh, remember this, whoever sows sparingly or gives seed or financial gift uh, will also reap sparingly, and whoever sows generously will also reap generously. Each of you should give what you have decided in your heart to give. So you decide in your heart to give, not reluctantly or under compulsion, for God loves a cheerful giver. Why don't you look at somebody and just smile. Don't make it a fake smile. But make he loves a cheerful uh, giver. And God is able to bless you. Look at this. And God is able to bless you abundantly so that in all things, at all times, having all that you need, you will abound in every good work. Do you believe the word of God? Come on, anybody is a cheerful giver here today. And so as you prepare to give, I'm going to give some announcements. And as uh, uh, I give the announcements, they're going to serve you. And uh, I'll give you more instructions that, again, it, back in the uh, uh, debit machine is there in the foyer for you. And so uh, we thank you in advance in, be in behalf of our pastor, Pastor Brian and Laura. Thank you for your faithful giving. And you can, the work is evident that this is good ground. Somebody say amen. Uh, people are coming to Christ. And as you hear the announcements, you'll see that God is moving here at Chapel of Change. So God bless you as you give and let me give you the announcements as the ushers serve you. And so uh, in March, March is a, you, can, you may serve the people. And so uh, just listen to the announcements. Um, how many know we're facing a new month? Somebody say amen. All right, March is right around the corner. So we're going to march with March. Somebody say amen. And so write this down on uh, March 5th and 6th. Uh, there'll be baptisms at all churches, and it's a sign-up. So you're going to sign up. Uh, when is it? March 5th and 6th. That's going to be our baptism for all churches. Sign up. That's when you're going to sign up. And also on the 11th and 13th, all real men, uh, king's men, are going to revival in Dallas. Come on. Any men in the house? All right, we're going to Dallas. They're going to Dallas. Also, on the 12th and 13th, uh, you want to know more about Chapel of Change? How do I be a part of this ministry? We're going to have a membership seminar, so please write that down. It's the 12th and 13th uh, membership seminar. And then we're going to close it out. Somebody say on the 26th. On the 26th of March, abide, woman in person... Would y'all let me finish the announcement? Y'all are about to say, how many know they're excited about that? Is somebody, are there any women in the house? Come on. So a bi woman in person gathering right here at Paramount. Come on. Come on, ladies. Show, how, show us how you do it. Amen and amen and amen. Uh, let's stand together. How many glad they came? Anybody glad they came to the house of the Lord? I've been instructed by the Holy Spirit uh, as we receive the blessing to turn to the book of Numbers. And I'll look at verse, uh, Numbers chapter 6. I believe it's number 6. The pastors are going to come. 
and you need some special prayer, uh, maybe something that uh, from this message that you got to trust the Lord to provide and you're going through a test right after the blessing the pastors will be here it might be something totally different but whatever you're facing we're here to serve you so here at Chapel of Change we like to lift our hands before the Lord to receive a blessing and mean it from your heart let's tap into the throne room of God right now and the Bible says in Numbers chapter 6, verse 22, the Lord said to Moses, tell Aaron and his sons, this is how you are to bless the Israelites. And I sense this in my spirit. Kenny, this is how you are to bless chapel of change everyone that shall hear uh, my voice through you uh, bless them this is what you ought to say to them and once you receive it the Lord bless you and keep you uh, the Lord make his face shine upon you you're not here by accident oh the Lord be gracious to you and the Lord turn his face towards you and give you peace Somebody here needs the blessing of grace. Somebody here needs the blessing of peace. And it goes on and says, so they will put my name on the Israelites. And so they will put my name on Chapel of Change. And the Bible says, the Lord says, I will bless them. God wants you to know, I will bless you. In the name of the Father, we receive the blessing. In the name of your son who died on the cross for us because he loved us to bless us. That he went into a grave for us but he didn't stay there because he loves us because he wants to bless us. And now sits on the right hand of the father interceding for us because he loves us and wants to bless us. And sent the Holy Spirit to empower us and live in us because he loves us and he wants to bless us. And so, Father, we stretch our hands and our heart to thee, and we simply say thank you for the blessing that we don't even deserve because you're a good, good God. And if you believe that, put your hands together. Come on, put your hands together. Go ahead and give God a high five. Say thank you. Thank you, Lord. God bless you. Have a wonderful, wonderful afternoon. Don't forget the pastors are here to serve you. And there'll be agreement whatever you're going through. And God bless you as you leave. Again, you can give somebody out there where we will receive you for your tithes and offerings.